So what does a normal person take to the MDS? I'm just making this video really because when I was looking for tips, tricks, you know, kit checks and so on and so forth, I had the packet kit, all the videos I was coming across on YouTube were elite runners, ultramarathon runners, people who were going out to the desert to, you know, break PB, set really good times. But what I want to do is just show you what the normal guy, what the normal guy might take. And um, like I say, I'm not an older math and runner. Um, I'm not, I, I'm, you can't really put me in a, in a runner's category. I'm nearly, 50, I'm nearly 15 stone, but I'm doing the, the NDS quite soon. And I just want to share some of the, you know, some of the things that, experiences I've gone through over the last, over the last few months. So um, hopefully you get something out of this and hopefully it'll help you on your journey to the NDS. Um, first of all, as you can probably see, uh, this is when we were supposed to do it, 2020. And obviously now it's 2022 with all the postponements, COVID and all the, and all the likes. Uh, but we're finally here. So I'm just going to, like I say, just share some of the stuff that, that I've come across. I think, first of all, the, the biggest thing is, um, you know, you can, when it comes to the weight of your, of your rucksack, base, that whatever you want to call it, there's a minimum of six and a half kilos and there's a maximum of 15 and a half kilos. And it comes down to how much money you've got. If you've got a lot of money, then you can buy silk, this, titanium, that, and get everything down to a nice, uh, nice weight down to the lower end of the scale. Uh, if you haven't got that much, um, if, if obviously money is a bit of an issue, then you're not going to be able to afford all of the, all of the, the, the nice light things. I think I probably got a bit of a combination of both. And a couple of things I asked myself when I was buying my kit um, was, I asked myself three things. Was it too expensive? Would I use it again? And is it essential? Obviously, you know, the first one obviously was, is the biggest one, how, how expensive it is. But the second one then was, would I use it again? So that then come into my mind. There were some things that I bought that arguably weren't as light as what they could have been, but I thought, well, I'm going to probably use that again. So there's no point having something that will only be available in, you know, in, a, in a desert environment. So hopefully I'll, I'll bring that out a little bit um, as well. So when it comes to packing a kit, first of all, from the organizers, you have an essential, an essential list. Some things that you have to have to actually take part in the race. And they check these on the first day when you get, or the second day when you get out into the desert. And um, depending on uh, if you have them or if not, then there's penalties, you may get an hour penalty, two hour penalty, right up to, if there's certain things like your rucksack, if you haven't got a rucksack, then you don't take part in the event as well. So I'm just gonna go through some of the uh, essential items, then I'm gonna go through some of the items that you still need, and then I'm gonna go through some of the items that maybe are a little bit of a luxury and I'll just go through obviously all of my sort of my the way I think about it and hopefully then when I come back from the desert I might post another video saying do you know what I took that desert didn't use it chucked on the first day or this is a godsend I'm glad I'm glad I took that extra couple of couple of grams to the desert so so first of all um is we're going to do essentially it's kit so first you need is a day sack so I went for I went for a 35 litre day sack. Now I've got, I know some of the people that go in, to go in there, you know, 20 litres, 25 litres. I couldn't get my stuff in a 20, 25 litre day sack. So I've gone for the, so for a, an ultimate direction, 35 litre day sack. Um, it's a little bit battered and bruised now because I bought it back in 2019, ready for 20 and I've been training with it ever since. Um, but it's okay. There's, I'll be honest, a couple of the, a couple of the fasteners have, have, have broken, probably down to, to me chucking it around more than actual equipment failing. Um, but it's still going, and it's still going to be the and it's still going to be the one that I take to the desert with me. Um, the next thing is is a sleeping bag, and this was this was one of the this was one of the things that I asked those questions about. Now you can buy you can buy sleeping bags that weigh 300, 350 grams, you know, likes of PhD and Yeti, and they're fantastic. Um, but they're expensive. You know, you're looking, you're looking upwards of 350, 4, 450. I've seen some even 500 pounds. Um, so I've gone for, and again, it's something I thought, well, do you know what? I'm probably going to use it again. So I've gone for a mountain equipment helium 400, which is probably, um, the reality is, is it's going to be, it's probably going to be too hot in the desert. Um, I think I've got the stuff stuck somewhere. Um, I, I say, but in regard, I think, I think the, I think the comfort rating on this is about, 
three degrees, five degrees. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be way too hot. But the way I look at it is I'm gonna use it again and it cost me, I think, 185, 190 pounds. Um, the reason I put it in this is because obviously it comes in a big cube and that was obviously couldn't go in there. Even the stuff that I come with didn't get it small enough, so I've got as small as I can. And do you know what? I'm quite happy with that. Right, you know, and I've saved myself 250, 300 pounds. So I'm I, I'm happy with that. Um, so that is something again you need. Um, some people again, you know, you've um, I did sort of toy with the idea. You can get half sleeping bags, so you wear a jacket and you've got a half sleeping bag that goes up to your waist. Some of them actually attached to each other. But you know, what I thought I'm going to probably use it again. So that's that's what I did. Um, next thing is a, a head torch. So I've gone for the Petzl Petzl Swift. Uh, it's not the lightest of head torches. It's also a it's also rechargeable. Um, so instead of a spare set of batteries which you've got to have, I've had to I've had to um, fork out for another spare battery. Um, but again, I'm watching a few videos, a couple of people are saying about how much you actually need a head torch, especially on the long day, especially if you're going to be um, moving through the night quite a bit. So I'm happy to take the extra weight um, and have that. And and also as well, you know, obviously um, I've also got a power bank, so. If I need a recharge again, then I'll do that as well. Um, what else we got there? Another thing you need, safety pins. I'd imagine that they are to stick your number onto your onto your top and your day sack and the couple left over for spare, or they could you know, help with something else. Um, you then need a knife, a knife with a blade. So I've gone for one of these little sort of Swiss, Swiss Army knife things. It seems to be like the, the little knife of choice. I have, I have put on a bit of, bit of elasticated cord, so, this will attach to my to my bum bag, so because it is quite small, and I don't want to, and I don't want to lose it. Um, and then this comes in handy if anything breaks. Then again, I can use this um, to hopefully fix some stuff. And again, it's, and also what the the beauty of this is, it's also got a little pair of scissors on there. So when you're doing your feet, then again, you can um, you can use those scissors on there as well. So that's that's your blade. Um, lighter. So I've gone for. Okay, it's not, it isn't the lightest of lighters. Um, but again, listening, you know, I've done quite a lot of research on YouTube, reading blogs and so on and so forth, and they say about the wind and the nonsense. And I think, I think what you'll probably notice with it, with when I review all of this kit is I quickly made the decision. What they say is, are you a competitor or a completer? And I quickly made the decision that I'm not a competitor. I'm not going to finish in the top 50. I'm nearly 15 stone. Um, so then I thought, okay, I'm happy. I'm also an ex, an ex infantry soldier. So carrying weight isn't a massive deal to me. I'd rather carry a little bit more weight and be comfortable. So I bought this super duper lighter. So I'm not gonna have any problems lighting my stove after a hard day on my feet. Uh, the compass, at the moment I've got silver compass, but I'm gonna probably switch that for like a little button compass. Don't know why, because as I said, weight isn't a, weight isn't a bit, isn't an issue to me. Um, Alcohol wipes, disinfectant wipes, so I've got some of there. I've also got a pair of, a pair of latex gloves, don't know why. Um, a couple of plasters, just in case um, I have a little nicks and so on and so forth. I've also got a couple of iodine patches, so again, if I need iodine just to clean up any wounds, then I've got that there. Um, venom pump as well, so this is obviously in case you get, in case you get bitten by any nasties, and as the name suggests, you can um, extract, extract the venom out here. Um, so obviously what it is, this thing by here, you have like something that goes on the end of it. Will I take it out of this plastic thing? Probably not because, okay, yes, it'll say 10 grams. The chances are I'll probably break one of those in the day sack or lose it. So again, I'm happy just to keep it in there. Um, a signaling mirror, still got a wrapper on it. There you go, I'll take the wrapper off now. Um, single in by there on a piece of string, but on the end of the piece of string is a whistle which you also need. So again, that is another part of the equipment. Um, survival foil blanket. Again, some people, some people cut these down because it doesn't act, doesn't actually say how big your foil blanket has to be. So I've heard stories of people taking an A4, an A4 size piece of foil blanket. You know, I am gonna, I am gonna problem with that. Um, sunscreen again. Um, factor fifty. Apparently, this is the one to get the the Ryman P twenty, so on and so forth. Happy days. So I got that. Um, then you need then you need two hundred euros. Um, mandatory you need two hundred euros. Again, some people some people get two hundred hundred euro notes. I think you could even get two hundred euro note again for the sake of it. Um, I don't really know what this is for. I mean, there's you know the rumors, 
rumours used to be that if you if you get um, Kazi vaxxed, then you've got to pay for the helicopter, um, and it's 200 euros. But um, the more I look at this, the more I think, do you know what, it's probably, because I've, because when you go through all the all the health and safety checks, you also have to take an ECG and so on and so forth, and you have to have all this kit. And if you don't have this kit, you get you obviously have penalties. But then you can probably buy it because there's like a little bivouac shop there, so you can probably buy it. So that's probably why you should take money. Otherwise, probably not going to take card in the middle of the desert. You need your passport again. Make sure that you've got at least three months um, left on it. By the time you come back, um, then you need the I, 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 won't, I won't get it here, but you need. The medical certificate signed off by a doctor, and you need a EC, an ECG, obviously a resting ECG uh, trace, and that is something. Also in there, I've got insurance and any of the stuff, to, um, the Morocco sort of health check to get in, my COVID vaccination, my COVID boosters, and all that sort of stuff. So that's all in that envelope, way to go. Um, so that's pretty much the mandatory equipment that you need that you need to have. And then it comes down to food, okay? So as you can see, food takes up quite a bit of um, a, a, a bit of room on this floor, but also the majority of the weight. And I will give you a, um, my, my thinking on it now. <laughs> it's coming in at 6.8 kilo. So it's probably half of the weight of my total kit. Now, what they say, you need to have a minimum of 2,000 calories a day. And I know people who are taking 2,000, 2,200, so on and so forth. I need 15 stone. My BMR is over 2,000 calories a day, okay? The amount of videos that I have watched on YouTube of people giving their diaries of the MDS and every night, I'm starving, I can't believe I can't get all of any food and so on and so forth. I'm happy to take calories, okay? Um, in that, and I'm sure that for you guys, if you're in the middle of your training now, if you're doing, you know, when you're doing your long runs, you probably get back and you're ravenous. Imagine only having 2,000 calories a day. Um, so I'm taking, I'm taking much more. Just for, you know, um, what we got here. I think day one is, I think day one, I got 3,751 calories on day one, okay? I think my maximum for the long day, I got 4,943. And the way I look at it, you know, because people say, oh, yeah, but, you know, you're carrying, you're carrying enough fat, you know, your, your body will use fat. The reality is, though, is for your body to you start using fat as an energy source, it takes, it, takes, it takes more than a few days to actually get used to. So um, we know that, you know, um, food is fuel. And if you think of it like that, then, then you're okay. And as I said, I'm happy with carrying that extra, that extra weight. Um, I might be taking more out. And then, do you know what? If on day three that I realised I haven't eaten, you know, food on day one and two, then I can get rid of it then. That's absolutely fine. I'd rather I'd rather be in that position than actually going out there and scavenging food and going in the bins looking for food because I'm starving. Like I say, I eat, I eat way more than 2,000 calories every day. So for me to go out there and to, and to in, into, that, into that climate and to do that and expect to eat less, A, I wouldn't be able to fuel my body and I wouldn't be happy with it as well. I'll be miserable, it'll start, it'll start playing on my mind, and it'll affect, it'll, it will massively affect my performance. If, if like I say, it comes out of food is fuel. So if you don't have enough fuel, then basically you, you are then at the deficit the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. So I'm happy to take that. So things I have, um, things I have been taking, but but that, that being said, what I've gone for, and again, if you, um, I went for Expedition Foods, uh, because it's simple, it's a one-stop shop. You go there and they actually give you like a, uh, an, an MDS pack if you like. And I went for the, I went for the thousand calorie meals. So I got a thousand calorie breakfast, thousand calorie uh, dinner. If I don't finish it, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, I'll check it away. That's, you know, that is, that is, and I'm sure there'll be people, I'm sure there'll be, I got people in my 10 year olds only taking 2000, okay? So I'll probably give them something. They'll be happy, I'll be happy. Everyone's a winner. Um, other things I've taken with in the days. Um, so I got my porridge in the morning. And I'll give you one thing though. One thing I potentially uh, messed up on. When I was ordering my stuff, I thought, right, just do what you know and you'll be fine. So I thought, right, do you know what? I'm just going to alternate. I'm going to have two different breakfasts. I'm going to alternate two different meat meals. I'm going to alternate because I'm thinking I need to get my head out of the, oh, have variety, have these different tastes. I need to get into a mindset of food is fuel, bust. As I was packing my stuff and taking them out there and putting them in vacuum packs, I then started thinking, would I need a bit more variety? Because I think I've basically gone from 
Powered your blueberries, powered your strawberry, powered your blueberry, powered your strawberry, all the way through. And then spag ball, carbonara, spag ball, carbonara. But I'll let you know whether or not it was it was okay. Then I've got things for the day. So I've got a packet of Biltong. I love Biltong. And again, it's just something just something just to keep chewing as you go in. Um, I've gone for, I've got, a, I've got a flapjack. I've got a, a, a cliff bar. I've gone for nuts. Um, everyone says, you know, I'll see macadamia nuts have got the highest calories. I think something like 750 per 100 grams. Um, again, they're Rockefeller, you know, they're, they're twice the price of cashew nuts. So what I did was I bought a load of macadamias, but I also bought a load of mixed nuts, almonds, pistachios, um, cashews, and then I mixed them all together. Okay, I mixed them all together. And I also went for um, salted as well because something that you know in the past when i've done you know, I've, I've done a couple of events not many but what i found is after a while i can't handle any more sweet stuff i need savory so by having those salty nuts i think that's gonna that's gonna help massively and i'll just keep grazing as as i go um what else have i got i got any you know those cliff blocks those um um i can see how in the past i haven't really got on with these because i eat them too fast you're supposed to suck them and so on and so forth i just i eat them like and um but but we'll see um then that's pretty much going to sustain me whilst I'm, whilst I'm moving. When I get back then, I've got a, a protein recovery shake that I'll take straight away. And then my evening meal, like I said, spag bowl or carbonara. And that's pretty much all I've got for the, you know, for the food. Obviously, on, my, uh, on the long day, then I've just doubled up snacks. And also what I have done is, um, I don't know if I've got it right here. So I've got a main meal for the long day, but I don't want to make this decision now. But then part of me is thinking, I don't want to stop on the long day for a meal because imagine, imagine I stop for a meal, a meal and sit down an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Then to get up and start again is going to be a nightmare. So what I did do, I don't know if I got it around here actually. Um, did I have it here? Uh, I, I just had another, sh like a 500, like a 500 um, calorie shake. I don't think I got it. Oh, never mind. Uh, I did have a, a 500 calorie shake. So I might just have that. And then I got a spare meal as well, um, so that's fine. And I got, and I got obviously got uh, noon tablets, which are obviously um, to keep you to keep you hydrated. Salt. I'll see you get you you, you get is, issued salt tablets, and um, again keep taking those. They're you know, they're really really important. So that's pretty much everything that you have to have. Um, and now what I'm going to do now is the other kit that you is not compulsory, but you have to have it. So first thing is. Um, we've got bottles, so I went. I've got two raid like bottles, and again, these are the ones just, just obviously with my thing. They just sit in one here, one here, and then you don't have to um, you don't have to take it out to drink it. So I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs. Um, I think this is going to be my biggest drama in the in the desert because I don't I don't drink enough. So I need to. I'm thinking of how do I make sure that I'm drinking enough. So that's something that I still need to get fixed in my head. Um, whether or not I put a timer. Whether or not I don't know, I need to make sure that I'm drinking enough um, because if I don't, then danger will be uh, will be around the corner. Obviously, you got your set. You got your set. Your Sahara hat again. I've gone for the the standard raid light one with the thing. This is actually detachable. Um, I watched a couple of videos and there was a some people get really said they get really fed up with this because it, it starts hanging down by the side of their by the side of their face. Um, but again, you could take it off. A lot of people just said, Do you know what? I just put loads of Factor Fifty and just use a cap. But then so on so forth. So that's so that is the that's the hat. Um, then it comes down to um, well, first of all, I'll, I'll, obviously the clothes that I'm wearing now. So these are so this is this is going to be the clothes that I'm wearing. So obviously I've got this this top. Now what you're probably thinking, why are you wearing black in the desert? Well, this is going to be a bit of a trial. So one of the guys, uh, part of the team, um, done some research, and obviously you know the black absorbs heat, white reflects heat, and so on and so forth, and his things. But um, what his what his thinking was was if if white reflects heat, then if you've got white on, it's going to reflect the heat coming off your body going back. Okay, um, we'll wait and see. I'll make a, I'll, put, I'll I'll make another video after the thing and say, do you know what? Black was a great choice, or never wear black again. I'll I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I've gone for raid light. I've gone for raid light shorts again with a built in with a built in um, leggings if you like. Um, and again, I think something that. Everything that I've making choices and clothing and so on and so forth, it's in the back of my mind is thinking, is sand going to affect it? Because I think that's the thing. It's about chafing, minimizing chafing, minimizing the opportunity for yourself to get um, injured. So basically, it's um, 
every every sort of decision you make has to has to have that in mind. Um, and then and then when it comes to socks, so when it when it's when it comes to socks now, I recently um, recently bought these um, these Injinji socks. So these obviously these toe socks. I'm sure I'm sure again you've all you've all seen them. I've done a couple of training runs with these socks on, but I'm still undecided and. The reason for that is, yes, they're great, and apparently, you know, because they don't, you know, your toes are not touching, so your toes can't rub, and so on and so forth. But then, the amount of videos I watched, and, you know, I've been training, I haven't had any blisters, but I watched loads of videos of people training, I haven't had any blisters. You go in the desert, you get blisters. You get blisters standing still. So, what I'm thinking is, imagine my feet are in clip, and they're bandaged up, and the skin is falling off them. How, how easy, and... Pain free is it going to be to get these things over my toes? Okay, so I'm I still have I'm still undecided. So I got a pair here. Uh, again, some people take one pair and just keep them on. Some people take two pairs. Some people take a new pair for every day. So I've taken I've taken another pair of these in Gingy just in case I like them. And I'm still going to But I've also got a backup pair of normal um, Hillies just in case the toe socks just don't work for me. And also as well, what the toe socks do is they increase your the front of your foot in your toe box. So if your if your trainers are not really wide, it is going to have effect. Imagine then put on top of that the tape on your feet, you might not be able to get your feet in your trainers at the beginning of the day either. Um, so that's so that's where I am with that. Um, will I get rid of one? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, for, for the sake of a weight, a pair of socks. As long as I can get it in my day sack, so I'm out. Um, I got one spare pair of. Um, Boxer shorts. I got a spare top as well. Um, I'm undecided whether or not to to, to bin that. Um, you know, this at the end of every day is going to be crusty. Um, would it be nice to actually put on something that's a little bit fresher? I don't know. Um, what I know, you know, something that I go with the years of you know hill walking and running and being out for long periods of time. Sometimes, if you get this right, then everything else is okay. So sometimes, just that feeling of being you know being comfortable. It has a massive effect on your mental health as well. So, but so again, I'm not too sure. I've also got a pair, of, a pair of skins, um, compression tights, just again for when I get back every day. Again, not too sure whether I'm going to keep them. They're not, they're not that heavy. They take up a little bit more, a little bit more space. So, something as well is I'm going to take all this stuff with me because when you get in the desert, you obviously you get there on the on the first day. Uh, well, half half is the door. The next day then is your admin day. So it might be the case that you take it. I'd rather take it all with me. Get into the desert, get a layer of the land, think, ah, I don't need that, or yes, I'm glad I brought that. You can always put it in your whole luggage and they can go back to the hotel. Okay, rather than leaving in your house, get into the desert thinking, oh, I wish I had that now, because it's too late when you're in the desert. Uh, I've got my trusty buff, obviously with um with um God's Country printed all over it. Also got a God's Country badge on the front on the back of my day sack as well. So that will be um a godsend as well. So that's pretty much close. I got again um calf sleeves whatever you call them i had these years and years ago when i got roped into doing a cycle event and so i didn't i didn't buy any new ones i just took these out of the thing but i didn't i did a bit of training these and these are a bit of a godsend so again from helping my calves with cramp and so on and so forth they've been a bit of a godsend um what else um jacket so again in the nights it does it does get cold and i've heard stories of it getting down to like sort of zero degrees um, so a jacket is really really important now this is what i did with this obviously as you can see i've got a yeti i got a yeti jacket because this is a, this is the thing is look at this look how small this jacket goes i've got plenty of insulated jackets none of them go down this small okay but i wasn't happy to go with the with the sleep bag because of the cost but what i did do that i bought this on ebay okay so this was no this this retails at 350 you know 360 something like that I picked it up for a hundred pound on eBay, um, and I and I have used it outside of outside of this. So I was willing to put that extra bit of bit of coin into that um, because again, that and a massive jacket would have been too much. Um, glasses. So it was my birthday a few months ago, so my wife treated me to a pair of Oakleys. So that'd be good for um, camera opportunities, photo opportunities, and so on and so forth. I've also got some storm goggles because uh, apparently the sand kicks up quite a bit. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, I'll go. In fact, I'll, I'll go with this. Obviously, so then you've got your trainers. So these trainers, these trainers weren't that weren't that old when obviously we were going to do it first of all. But these, they probably came out with 
four different is issues since then. So I've gone, I've gone for um, Brooks, Brooks Ghost. Again, I can remember going, going to the expo, oh God, back in 2019 now, and there was a good, there was a good talk by Elizabeth Barnes, and she, she, she spoke a lot of common sense, basically saying, it all depends on how fast you run a marathon. Okay, so if you're a if you're a three hour three thirty uh, marathon runner, then you're probably not going to be on your feet that long in the day. So you can afford to wear minimalist trail shoes, something with a little bit harder, because you're going to be moving faster. You're not going to be on your feet as long. Um, if you're not though, you're going to be in your you're going to be on your feet for a long period of time. You're probably going to need a bit more cushioning, so they are going to be a bit heavier. So I've gone for Brooks Ghost, and that was something was recommended to me by um, by Brian. Um, so thank you, Brian, for that. So hopefully these will be okay. As you can see, um, again, you know, you, you can get even more cushion if you see the hocker hocker ones. Um, then they're massive. They're massive. But I'm six foot three. Put them on me as well. I'll be six foot nine. Okay. So I'm quite happy to have these. As you can see, obviously we've got the we've got the velcro that's stitched around them. Set these off. I think I paid about fifty pound to have velcro stitched around them. And then this, the, those where your sand gaiters will go, okay, obviously round the, round the shoes, round the bottom of your ankles to make sure that you limit the amount of sand. Now, I've done some tricks, I live in, obviously as you probably guess, I live in Wales, so I, I don't live far from Merthyr Mawr, so I've been down to Merthyr Mawr a couple of times, worn all those, no sand got into my shoes, okay, um, so fingers crossed, I'm sure it'll be a different story out there, but um, it worked quite well for me. Um, so that's pretty much everything I'm going to be wearing. Nothing else going to be wearing. Okay, so some of the other things that we've got. Okay, so we'll start from the front. So when it comes to medical, because of obviously COVID and so on and so forth, you have to take out with you 13 face masks and hand sanitizer. So that is what we got there. Um, Gurney Goo, apparently this is, this is the thing. So this is about um chafing and friction and so on and so forth so in between your legs and so on and so forth i think you could actually put it on your feet as well uh, i've got another one of these now i'm not too sure this is 85 mil i need to make a decision before and am i going to use both of these um, again i'll probably take the other one with me and then leave it in my bag if i decide not to but again very 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 important um lip bar and whatever you call it lip balm yeah lip balm there I've also got the on the after I watched the video on YouTube of um, Rory Coleman about taping your feet. Then I've got some Hapla tape here. It's a benzoin tincture, I think it's called, and very very good stuff. What I would say on that though, guys, I watched a video a couple of weeks ago. Practice doing it. Practice doing it. It sounds it sounds okay. Simple. Taping your feet up. Simple. When you, when you watch a video, you say yeah, yeah, simple. But just have a couple of times doing it, and especially if you've got toe socks, do it a couple of times. So I put these toe socks on, it's great running in them, because even if you don't, I don't get blisters, but just start doing them, because what you don't want to do is, is because sometimes that tape, it is a little bit sticky, and you've got to do this, better you know how to do it quite easily, rather than getting out to the desert, and then um, faffing about, and you've got wind and sand everywhere, and you start to get frustrated, and you rip it off, and you think, sod it, I'm not going to use it, and all of a sudden, then you come back, and your feet are falling off. Okay, so give it a go. I've also got some Hyperfix tape, um, if I need to put on my shoulders and so on and so forth. Um, toothpaste, toothbrush. A lot of people, a lot of people chop these down. Okay, weight's not an issue. Okay, I mean, I do have a half a toothbrush. I'll take a full toothbrush. I'll find somewhere to do it. Um, then I've got these these things that I think um, these are these are amazing. These are amazing. Let me see. Let me see, let me see if I can show you how amazing these are. So it looks like. So I've got a tablet of some description. And then what you do is you just get a little bit, it's only a little bit of water. And all of a sudden, let's have a look what happens here. Look, look at this. And all of a sudden, it opens up and opens up and opens up. And then you've got, hey, 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 presto, you've got a cloth. So, washing your face, so on and so forth. A lot of people then dry these out and use them as toilet paper. They don't take toilet paper with them. Um, fantastic. You can get, I think they call, you know, there's a, if you, if you go on my race kit, there's a, there's a link to them. I, I got mine from Amazon and I, I got a bag like that. So it lasts me for years. Um, but goodbye, goodbye. And obviously they're really small, so they're, so they're happy days as well. Um, earplugs, again, in case we've got some snorers in the tent, 
Um, probably will have some snores. I snore when I'm t when I'm tired. I'm going to be tired for six days, so I'm probably going to snore. Um, I got some hand um, sanitizer as well. I think sitting as well. It's everything you're going to desert is stopping yourself getting infected with anything. You know, like I said, your feet are going to fall apart. But then, like, see, so, you know, last last October, fifty percent of the field didn't finish. I know there's a bug that went through. Um, so you just need to keep yourself keep yourself um, as clean as you can. Okay, I know it's not going to you're not going to be perfect, but keep yourself as clean as you can. Um, a couple of other things, obviously, from a from a from a drug point of view, if you like. So again, I'll be de I will decant all these. I'll probably you know. So I got some Dioralite, really really important. I know you get salt tablets, but I'll keep these as well. Um, some Imodium, again, I'll cut all these down and so on and so forth. But because um, I say that's the thing is, if you all, all of a sudden you get a bit of diarrhea, then you're going to be dehydrated. Like dehydrated. So trying to keep uh, your st um, fluids up is going to be important. Paracetamol and uh, brufin as well. Take them out, cut them down um, for some painkillers. Um, then we got, this is, look at the size of this. So this is my power bank stroke solar charger. Um, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's not the heaviest thing in the world, but it's heavy. Um, I had to decide where to, to, to use this. So obviously I've taken out with me a phone which I'm only going to use for uh, photos and videos, but it isn't going to last. It isn't going to last six days. Um, I've got a rechargeable. I've got a rechargeable head torch if I if I need to. I'm taking. I got a Garmin Phoenix, so I'm going to take this again. It, it might last. It might not. Um, so I made the decision to get a solar charger. So obviously it is also a power bank. So this this is charged up now. This will be fine. If I then need to get more power, then it folds out. Um, and I've already sort of like fashioned it, if you like, on the back of my day sack. So I, if I need to, I can move uh, because uh, it depends on the time I get back to camp every day. Do you know what? If I don't, if I don't use it, then that's fine. But um, it is, it is quite heavy. Who knows what? I, what I could do? I could be the, I could start um, charging people's phones, char charging them, charging them five euros to charge their phone. Who knows? Um, but obviously, what I'm again then. So because I got that. I'm then deciding whether to take my AirPods or just a plug-in thing of these. Um, I think as well, I think there's gonna be plenty of time where I'm gonna be, you're gonna be talking and so on and so forth, but there will probably be some dark times when you need to just have a playlist, you know, just go in the background. Um, the, the battery life on these is quite good, and obviously the, the cases are charged as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going towards these, uh, but obviously power-wise, you know, these are obviously better, but then you're gonna have wires everywhere. So I'll take both, but I'll probably use those. Uh, make sure you take any charging cables that you need. <laughs> Imagine how gutted you'd be if you took that and then you forgot your charging cables. Um, sleeping mat. So I got this sleeping mat here, and as you can probably see, there's a sleeping mat on the end now because about a week ago I started I started flapping a little bit, thinking, um, "What if my sleeping mat breaks? What if it What if it punctures?" So I bought that and. So obviously, you know, these, obviously there's nothing to can punch you with these, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to take both with me, um, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I'm going to use, on the, when I get on the first night, I'm going to use this, okay, and then I'll wake up in the morning and then make a decision, do I stay with this or do I swap it with that? Whichever one I don't take, chuck in my bag, get it when I get back to the hotel. So I'm not too sure on that. Blow up pillow, again, really, really important. Camp sliders, so these are like I think these are these are the go-to thing. So go, go to your local hotel, these weigh these weigh nothing. Um they're quite thin, but I don't know how to get my feet in these. But the last thing like I say, the first thing you're gonna want to do when you get back to camp is take your feet off. Your feet are gonna be in bits. So but I think I, I think getting my feet in there is gonna be more painful than actually keeping my trainers on. But we'll see, we'll see. Um cooking, so you've got obviously a little cooking mug pot thing there. You've got your little um Esbit stove. Again, so you opens out like so. Put your little. Obviously, you get your um, what do you call it? Your ta your hexamine tablets when you get there. Weighs nothing. Sips in there. Now, something else that I bought, and I'm not too sure. Is it a luxury item? Am I going to keep it? I'm not too sure yet. Um, re watching videos, reading stories about the wind. Obviously, I told you about the lighter, but the wind. You know, when people. 
people then trying to get trying to scurry around get rocks so you make like a, a fire break if you like so when you're cooking your when you're cooking your food you're fine and people digging down to make sure i get a fire pit so i thought yeah okay and then what i did was i bought this i might not take it's not i don't know it probably weighs 10 probably weighs 10 in fact did i weigh it i might have weighed it actually so obviously that's that's also what i've done is i've weighed everything um i don't know why mm, don't think i i'm not invited to somewhere. anyway so i bought this and i might take it well i'm taking it i might I might get ridiculed so much on the first day that I say, do you know what, it's not worth taking it. But basically it's this. And it's, and it's just basically, I'm just gonna put it around my thing, put it into the sand, and then it's done. I bought it on, I bought it on Amazon. I spent so much money on Amazon. Jeff actually emailed me the other day and said, thank you. Um, it's mental. But I don't know, I'm gonna take it with me. Um, I may, I may, Jettison it straight away. I may not. I don't know. Um, my little selfie stick, so I can keep a nice, a nice diary of my um, adventure going through. Um, I bought some of these the other day as well because I watched a couple of videos. I, I wasn't going to take them originally, but then um, I watched a video the other day and someone said, "Oh, it's so nice to have something like cool and fresh on your face." And like, so these just like like little little wipes again they weigh they weigh next to nothing um i've gone for i'm going to wear my my arm waist pouch bum bag whatever you want to call it um obviously because i wouldn't fit all this just in my just in my day sack but also as well it's about having quick access to stuff that you need and this is something that if you're if you're the beginning of your training guys make sure you're going out and you're using the stuff that you're going to use in the desert because you know if you know, i don't know what your day sacks are like but then you know all my snacks are going to be here any sort of emergency first aid stuff is going to be there so i'm not taking my rucksack off going through pockets thinking oh where have i put that everything i need bump is in there quick access and that's pretty much so the only other, the only other two things that i'm not too sure at the moment i'm not taking them um but before i go i'll make i'll make that decision the first one is because at the moment we're quite um so for 2022 we're doing it ever so slightly earlier at the moment it's going to be the, the actual um weather forecast um is a little bit cooler and then the wind and so on and so forth so i've got these but i'm not sure if i'm going to take them so these are um what do you call them sleeves if you like so they go on they go on your arms and obviously so you don't have to have a full top so they can go there i don't know whether i'm going to take them um you know when it gets cool in the evening for the long stage i don't know am i going to be that bothered in that and the other thing then is i've got this little this montane feather like feather like smock you know if it's if it's if i'm walking around camp at night it's cold but not not warm enough not cold enough for that top i don't know i'm not too sure whether i'm gonna i'm gonna take it um but that's pretty much but that's pretty much it um and then all of this gets in there so i hope it, you know i i, I hope that you know, you may have got something out of this video. If, there, if you've got any questions on any of the selections that I made or any advice or any sort of, any advice that you no, 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 don't take out of then let me know quite, you know, let me know. Um, I'm not sure what I'll post this before I go, but um, it'd be nice to hear from you. But I hope it helped, guys, and um, good luck on your on your journey.